defend you make personal attacks. They question, they question, they question people's intelligence, they question our ability to reason, they call us names, they make, was that him? They make, they make accusations that are unfounded because they don't know us and they come here and they defend you by attacking us and by saying things that we are guilty of that we haven't done. That's who defends you. Do you understand that? Those are the people that defend you and you think that's funny. See, I saw you were studying for a test, by the way. And I, I, I applaud you for being consistent in your, in your desire to do well in, in school. But see, the, the test that you're studying for, the exam that you're studying for is trivial in the, in the ultimate end because there is one test that's coming for you, there's one examination that's coming for you that you are not going to be able to study for, that you aren't going to be able to prepare for by memorizing things on cards and reciting them back to yourself, young lady. 2 Corinthians 5, starting in verse 1, we read, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be to put on our heavenly dwelling if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked for while we are still in this tent we groan beaten burden not that we would be unclothed but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life he who has prepared us for this very thing is god who has given us the spirit as a guarantee so we are always of good courage we know that while we are at home in the body we are away from the lord for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him, Him being God. For mu we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. See, that's the examination you should be concerned about. That is the exam that you need to be studying for. And see, the study that you need to do for that exam is the scriptures, young lady. Because in the scriptures, you learn everything you need to know about God and everything you need to know about yourself. See, you are going to be found wanting on the day of judgment. Standing here right now, if you were to be weighed in the balance, you would be found wanting. God would rule you to be an unconverted, blaspheming, liaring, murdering, adulterer at heart. And because of that, He is going to hold you accountable on the day of judgment. But He has provided a way for you in the same chapter of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, He says, For He, God, made Him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin on our part so that we could become the very righteousness of God. See, that is how you're going to pass that exam in the future, young lady, because you will stand before God and He will judge you. He will examine you. And it's not a multiple choice test where you can guess at the best answer. It's not an essay where you can use eloquence of speech. It's not a, an essay where you can blather on and on and on and sound as if you know what you're talking about. It's, it's not even an oral exam where God is going to ask you questions about yourself and you're going to be able to say to Him, well, I did all of these wonderful things. Well, God, don't you know that I stood in front of the abortion mill and I protected women as they went out and in and I protected the clinic workers as they went out and in and I defended them against those horrible, hateful people. God, don't you know I did those things? Don't you know I was kind to my neighbor? I marched with social justice activ activists. I stood up for the rights of minorities. I stood up for the rights of, of women. He's not going to look at all of those things. He's not going to ask you those questions, but you will give a defense for yourself. And you will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do all these things? And on that day, according to the scriptures in, John, in Matthew chapter 7, he's going to say, get away from me, you worker of sinfulness, you worker of evil. I never knew you. See, so as you sit here and you study for this exam, as you study for an examination of man's standards for what they equate to be all knowledge and all truth, you are going to find yourself failing because you are not prepared for the final exam which comes before the throne of God. So please repent and believe the gospel. Turn away from the wickedness that you do here. 
whether or not you acknowledge it, it is evil. And whether or not that naysayer who rode by here and thought he was really smart and talked about carbon being present in the universe and, and then defended you and saying that you're just doing what is right, he's wrong. There is a God. You know it. He knows it. That's why he was so upset. That's why you're trying to ignore me now. You know there's a God and you know that he has the supreme authority and not only does he have the right, he has an obligation because of who he is and of his attributes, because of his holiness, because of his justice, because of his wrath against sin, because of who he is in his love for chiefly himself and then for those who are made in his image and then chiefly of those who are made in his image, all of those who repent and believe the gospel. Because of all of that, God has to judge you for what you're doing. God will judge you for the murder that you've taken part in. And this is murder. By the definition of it, it's, this is murder. These children are alive. And their lives are stripped from them here. They are innocent blood and you're taking part in that shedding. You will stand in account for this. And you will try to give a defense, but no defense that you give for yourself that comes from anything other than the shed blood of Christ on the cross. The defense that comes from anything other than being washed in the blood of Christ that is going to be leaving you wanting. You will have no excuse. You will be judged in your sin and your wickedness. And God himself is going to be the one that is going to cast you into eternal hellfire. Please don't do that. Please don't trust in what you're doing here today. Don't trust in your own righteousness. Don't trust in your own goodness. Don't trust in what it is that you do here. Turn to Christ and live. Turn to Christ and walk away from the evil that you do here. Turn to Christ. Repent of your sins. Repent of the wickedness that's going on in your heart. Repent of the hardness of heart that you have. I'm pleading with you. Hear this message. Believe the gospel, young lady. Don't trust in those men like that who come here and defend you. Who give you excuses for why what you do is okay. They're wrong and they're foolish and their hearts are darkened and I don't want your heart to remain darkened. Turn away from this. I'm begging you. I'm pleading you with you. If I could weep in front of you, I would. Please walk away from what it is you do here. Stop being complicit in the murder of children. Stop being complicit in the violation of God's law. Turn away from your foolish, darkened heart. Turn to Christ and live.